power grid. This 2004 release is, at the time of recording, still Board Game Geek's 16th greatest board game of all time, and now, with its 10th anniversary, it's the beneficiary of this. A new deluxe edition with plastic coins, nicer wooden tokens, and a gigantic board that you can feel the heat coming off as it tries to remain faithful to the original artwork while still looking nice. And now, this game can enjoy Shut Up and Sit Down's first ever re-review. Let's just see what happens, because Shut Up and Sit Down has a habit of approaching the classics the way the forestry department approaches a controlled burn. I'll just quickly whip you through how it works. So between two and six, six players are all building vast power networks across Europe, making the lights go on in a game that's equally about the freedom to build anywhere and also about butting heads with everyone, as if you were a herd of wild rhinos in the savannah cracking your horns against one another. Rhino fact, did you know that another name for a herd of rhinos is a crash of rhinos? Anyway, each turn of Power Grid is going to begin with players all auctioning off power plants. Now, this is going to be an excellent hot little mess of an auction because all the power plants require different resources and come in different sizes, and everyone wants to stay in late in the auction because then the higher tech plants from the bottom row fall into the top row you're all bidding on, except if you let the early bidders get away with their first bid on the low tech power plants, they'll still get a good deal. So what do you do? Nobody knows. That's Power Grid. In the next phase, you spend money hoovering resources off this track, with resources getting more expensive the less of them there are, and a very simple way to model an economy. So you're trying to balance hoovering up all the resources that are cheap now with actually having money to spend later. Then in the third phase, players build generators in cities, expanding their network. Now you want to be conservative here, because if you have generators in four cities but power plants that can only power two of them, you're only going to get paid for two cities. But you also have to be aggressive, because if you're not aggressive and you only build oh, one generator, then your friends are going to claim all those generator spaces, and then you are going to have to leapfrog them at incredible expense for the rest of the game, like a great impoverished electric toad. Finally, everyone flips the switch. And then you're going to pour resources into your power plant, power as many cities as you can, and you're going to get paid. Now, all you bastards who complained about the paper money in the original power grid, well, now Rio Grande evidently heard that you liked complaining so much, they gave you something to really complain about. Because these plastic coins are shit. So, we're 12 years on from this game's release now, and you know what? It still has an electric current running through it. When we reviewed Brass recently, which was another classic quote, air quotes, you know, that's a game where you have to sacrifice whole evenings on its altar for, its, for the depth of its puzzle to come out, whereas Power Grid, you know, maybe you can't necessarily access its puzzle because it is quite mathsy, but you can always at least see it as if you're looking at a reactor's core through a sheet of safety glass. It's as simple as this. All of Power Grid's phases interact with each other, they see the players interacting with one another, and they're all fun, whether you're auctioning or buying little wooden bits or building or earning money, it's all simple and crisp and clear. And it allows you to make really obvious mistakes, you know? You buy a power plant and you go, oh, I didn't even want that. Or you decide not to buy resources and then your friends go, oh, thank God, and buy them. And you're like, should have screwed them. Or you decide not to build a generator this turn and then your friend builds one and you go, oh, I realize now that I really needed to be in that space. But perhaps the way that Power Grid is still most relevant today with the most to teach board game designers is the way it lets players zap each other as if they were playing economic laser tag. I mean, you're, you're tussling, you know? None of this is making sense. Here's what I mean. Most board games, not even most economic board games, have a problem where players have to make a decision if they're not in first place of whether to make suboptimal plays that penalise the person in first place, or whether to play selfishly. Power Grid never has that. It lets you share and block everyone all the time in a very gentle way. Like, let's say that I know a particular player wants this gas plant. I can outbid them for the gas plant. I can buy gas. I'm never stuck to any one strategy. Let's say I think they're going to England. I can extend my network up to England, and all this stuff only ever costs me a few extra bucks. 
But similarly, players in first place, like boxers, can always duck out of the way of clumsy blocks. Like, if we're having an auction for this gas plant, I can drive up the bidding a little too high and make my opponents pay a little too much of it. I can make them go to England when really, maybe I decide I don't even need to build this turn. I'm very happy sitting on my money and waiting for a even better opportunity the next turn and that player's bankrupted themselves, they're a chump, they're an electric chump. In other words, on every turn you're always building that great snaking network that you want to, it's just also going to be biting some people along the way. So, do we recommend Power Grid? Sure. You know, the deluxe edition certainly. Did I mention that the new board is double-sided and that actually it has more regions on each side than it did before so you can wall off bigger sections of it but you know depending on the number of players but then that just means you can play with different variations each time so we've got a five player game here and I've walled off Eastern Europe and Greece but I could just easily have walled off Scandinavia and, and Italy and then we'd have a big choke point in Germany and, and then some people would be excited <laughs> I don't know if that describes me or not is it flawless? No! First off, the integers that Power Grid chooses to use really date it now, um, which might sound mad. Maybe it is. I don't know. What I'm saying is that when you're trying to guess which way to develop your network, you're doing sums like 15 plus 3 plus 15 plus 10 plus 15. Is that better or worse than 16 plus 15 plus 20 plus 3 plus, you know, or like even deciding whether you want to turn your power plants on, which if you're turning on two more, um, powering two more cities, you go from 8 to 10, so that's 15 and then you paid how much for the coal? 7 plus 6 plus 7. You know, it's fine. I can do this stuff, usually. And I enjoy it, mostly. But not all people can, or at least it's certainly not going to be everyone's idea of a hot Friday night. Another thing, Power Grid is almost quixotically German in that it values efficiency and clarity and reliability above all else in its players. You know, God forbid you have a couple of turns where you, know, you buy a power plant you surely shouldn't have or you don't expand when you should have because that just makes you a smaller rhino in this particular crash and the bigger rhinos are going to take their bigger money and reinvest it in their rhino business. Uh, and you're going to remain small and you know you kind of imagine the game going yeah you did not play efficiently so you will come last and you're like really power grid and the game goes yeah it's cool and <laughs> I don't know why that sorry that's just cracking me up there's one more reason I'm not going to be getting power grid to the table very often and that's because it's just not funny I mean maybe that's obvious to you but my friends and I always talk and laugh when we're playing games. We can't in Power Grid because we're all sat calculating for the whole game. And if that sounds like something you want, my God, definitely buy Power Grid. But there's one more reason that I'm quick to forgive it for all these flaws. I mean, I <laughs> flip-flop on this, but I do like it. And that's because it is just so excellently flexible with player count. So many economic games, you know, they're, they're weak with two. Power Grid, especially the deluxe version, which has a new robot player with if you're playing with just two, you know, the map shrinks excellently and you just have a tight little two or three player game. It expands a bit and you have room for a four or expands even more than you can play with five or six. Six! When was the last time you played an economic game with six that didn't get a bit cramped and disappointing as no one could take as many turns? No, with six players in Power Grid, it still feels epic for everyone and you all still share the, the resource track and the auctions. You're still sharing, you're still jostling. It, it's like the opposite of a hip Berlin nightclub. It's not cool, but there's room for everybody and everybody's, you know, welcome. God, I do just, maybe just even once or twice a year, I do really love a game of Power Grid. Hey, man, listen, I know it's late, but, um, you ever played Power Grid? Standing there all night. That's really weird. I hate when you do that. Oh, come in. Sod it, you're here now, so let's talk about some expansions. If you've got Power Grid Classic, you can buy new map boards and you can buy new power plant guards. I'd still recommend you get the deluxe version because this has the giant double sided board and it's just really nice. But whichever version you have, 
You lucky dog, you can now buy this box, which is far too big. It's called Power Grid the Stock Companies, and it adds stocks to any version of Power Grid you have. And it's, ah oh boy. Uh, would that I really were a power plant so I could have a cooling tower, because in this next segment I run the very real risk of overheating. So here's the simplest of the three variants you can play in the stock companies. You got a new stock price board. Everyone initially puts their stock price on 20 spaces. Every turn, every player's stock price is going to go up by 10, uh, except for the players who powered the most cities. Their power plant, their price Christ, goes up by another 10. Every player also gets 10 shares in themselves. And at any point, you can uh, cash in one of your shares, you get the stock price, and your stock price goes down by 10. But you just get that cash immediately. If you're a bit short on a power plant that you want to bid for, get some cash. Here's the thing. Other players can then buy that share in you for your stock price and just have it. And then they've got a share in you. And at the end of the game, unlike normal power grid, everyone gets a score. And your score is multiplied by the amount of stocks you have left in yourself. You also get other players' scores Yeah, for every stock you have in them. So you can come second and still win if you have more shares in the first player type thing. Um, now, I was interested in uh, stocks and share mechanics. It's actually a whole genre of very, very nerdy board games. And I'm aware that me calling anything nerdy is like the the crew of Star Trek Voyager landing on a planet and leaving because it's a bit uncool. But like just the maths involved in this. Let me show you what I mean. Hi. So you've got 10 shares in your company. You're in the lead, you're in first place. Those 10 shares are gonna be worth 23 points each and you can sell them for 80 electro. Here's a player, number red. His shares are gonna be worth about 17 points, you guess, from looking at the board state. Red then sells one of his shares, dropping his share price to 70 electro. Now, if you buy that share for 70 electro, you might come second, which means your shares would probably be worth about 19 points instead. So here's the question. If you buy this share for 70 electro, is 17 points worth more than dropping all 10 of your stock values down by three points. More to the point, is it worth, if Red sells another share, is it worth you selling one of your own to buy two shares in Red? Did you get the answer? Because the correct answer is, who gives a crap? I mean, in some senses, all this stock stuff is power grid squared because it's so cold and calculating and massively values efficiency. And it is kind of cool, but, you know, it's, it's not shared in the way power grid is. You're not doing stuff together and working together. It's as if you're all enjoying a big sharing platter and then the stock companies adds everyone a side of mathematical mashed potato. And maybe that's fine. Maybe you all like mashed potato, but you'd better like mashed potato because you have to eat your mashed potato. And if you don't eat this mashed potato, you're going to get f Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Quinn's that looks cool, but it's not enough of a pain in the ass. Well, I've got you covered. The other variant available in the stock companies Add to these. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. I thought it would be dynamic when I'm eating and talking at the same time. It's just rude and inefficient. So, every company then gets a personal player board that has their personal money and power plants and stocks. Why would you do that? Because in these variants, even if you're just two people, you play with five colors of companies. Why? Well, every company gets its stocks. Do you see where this is going? At the start of the game, everyone can buy any stocks in any companies. And the player with the most stocks in a given company is the player that controls it. Which, yes, means you could play a game of Power Grid where you control two of the colors. You're literally playing twice as much Power Grid. Or you could play the entire game and control nothing if you spread your stock around. And then the game, is in doing things like, you know, making money from a stock and then dumping your stocks in it before other people to lower the prices, or trying to predict and then, you could even control two companies and have one block the first to stop its growth, you know? It's completely mad. 
and kind of like if the simpler version is power grid squared then this is like an equation where you solve x and x is the entire game of power grid you know it's like strip poker you know is it fun yeah in certain circumstances is poker the point anymore no are you going to want to play it every friday no what are some people are going to want to play strip poker by which i mean this every friday but those people almost certainly will not be you most people are going to want to invest their money in another game and simply want power grid to put its pants back on she fell down again that's symbolic of power grid the stock companies isn't it so yeah buy power grid deluxe we think it's pretty great and maybe don't buy the stock companies unless you're mad and put the money towards another game ah oh, man the strip poker analogy got a lot less sexy at the end there play strip poker if you get the chance it's um i mean maybe don't